up YouTube and welcome back to another tutorial by me Cornish Ratbeard and Jamie Plays. This tutorial also features the collective member Toxic T15 and in this tutorial we are going to be taking a look at the planet management for Solaris. Now this tutorial is for complete beginners and it does include all DLC. Hi everyone, yes this is definitely a subject that needs covering as we've had so many questions and requests for a simple tutorial in which we will try to answer all of those questions. Alright guys, but please do note that in this tutorial we are going to be going over the basics of the planet summary tab and the population tab. Do see more of our guides for further tutorials which explore other areas of the game. So sit back and relax and let's get started. Okay, so first of all we can see our outline on the right hand side of our screen. This is a great shortcut provided by the devs which allows us to quickly find and manage our planets. So for example, if I wanted to see what's happening on my capital, I would simply have to go to the right hand side and find Clindathu, then left click. This now opens up the planet management tab. From here, we get a nice overview of how things are being run. We're going to start by taking you through the important parts on this screen so that we feel any beginner should know. Starting from the top there, this tells us the designation of the planet. In this instance, this is a hive capital, and by hovering over this, it will show you the benefits we get from this designation. You'll only ever have one capital system, and the rest you'll be able to pick from from a selection of colony designations, which we'll show you soon, and what they do for you. So, coming across to the right, we have the planet habitability and its size. Both are very important. So basically, the higher that habitability number, the happier your pops will be. You can set a lower number to habitable planets, but it's recommended to go for the planets that you'll feel at home on. Your homeworld and Gaia worlds will be the only planets where most species have 100% habitability. On planets with the same type as your homeworld, most species will have about 80% habitability. 60% habitability for planets in the same category, however those that are wet, dry or frozen, and 20% for all other types. Humans, for example, get 100% on Earth, 80% on other continental planets, 60% on other wet worlds like oceans and tropical worlds, and only 20% on frozen and dry worlds. The size determines how many districts that we will have on any given planet. Again, the higher that number, the better, as larger planets will allow us to put more districts down, which will eventually lead to much better production. Planets range in size between 12 and 25, unless it's a world with special circumstances like origins, fallen empires, or events. Moons range from about 10 to 15, again, unless exceptional circumstances apply. Continuing with this box menu, we have the ability to assign governors to your systems. Governors are great and offer different traits which will benefit you greatly. Be careful though, as some governors can develop negative traits which can harm your society. You won't actually need to put a governor in each system as each governor will take control of a whole sector, which can be any number of systems included. Looking over at your outliner, you can see just how many systems there are to each sector, so be sure to use them. Moving along to the right, we can see our stability in current population. The higher the numbers, the better when it comes to stability. If our population is stable, they will work harder and this will lead to better production across the board. Let this go too low, however, and you will find yourself in a full-scale revolt. Also note that stability leads to low happiness that can lead to high crime, then leads back to stability, which is quite a vicious cycle. There are certain buildings that will take care of stability, so don't neglect it. The current population here lets us know how many pops we have on our planet. This is a good indication of how populated the planet is. Generally, the higher the number, the better, as more pops means more jobs are being done and can be fulfilled. The Decisions tab will give us many different options to pick from, all with pros and cons. I won't go through them as each empire comes with their own set of decisions, but take a good look through the effects and see if any can help your empire. Resettlement is a very handy mechanic. If you find yourself overpopulated or another planet needs a little head start, then pick the planet you want to move pops from, and then on the right hand side, click the planet that you want to move them to. It's a good idea to move pops to a planet with available housing and free jobs. Note. This usually costs energy, so make sure that you bear that in mind. Below this, we have some super important information that we're going to need to go through. First of all, we have deviancy, but depending on the empire you're playing, this might say crime. Now, the higher this number is, the worse off your empire becomes. To battle this, look for buildings that decrease deviancy or crime. It's super important not to neglect this. 
housing is needed to allow your population to grow. If there's not enough housing, then your system will become unstable and you will start to see negative consequences, such as your pops choosing to emigrate, which will decrease your pop size dramatically. This will ultimately lead to less production. To combat this, we need to build districts or housing specific buildings found in your build list. Amenities are again controlled to stability. If we cannot keep our population happy, then they will definitely show us their wrath. Be sure to build lots of entertainment to ensure that the population continues to grow within your planets. Smaller amounts of amenities are also produced by ruler jobs, clerks, priests and a few others. So keep an eye out for all the supplementary sources, but entertainers will generally be the largest source of amenities. Now, keep an eye on the available jobs on each of your planets. Ideally, you want this number to say zero. If it says a higher number, then stop building things until your population can catch up and fill up those jobs. Having a high number here means that you are paying for upkeep for buildings or districts that aren't even producing anything for your empire. It's the opposite for unemployment. If this number is red, it means you have pops doing nothing, so you would either need to relocate that specific number of pops, or if you still have room to build, then go ahead and give those pops something to do by building them something. Now, sectors will be a different tutorial, but just briefly, if you have a look within this system, you can see that there's no governor. This button, Create New Sector, will solve that problem for you. Simply click it and then assign your new governor. Either pick from the pool of the ones that you have, or recruit new ones from here. So, Colony Designation allows you to customize your planets in very useful ways. For example, if you want to maximize your minerals, then consider making your own mining world. To do this, simply click on the icon here, and find the mining world designation. Click that, build mining districts and a mineral planet, and you will turn this planet into a mineral producing machine. We'd recommend customizing your planets based on the amount of, for example, mining districts the planet has. If your planet has more agricultural districts, then turning this into a mining district planet would not be very beneficial. The benefits of this designation are displayed here, and you can see it's very much worth spending your time customizing your planets in a way that sees your economy thrive, but still balanced accordingly. Your districts are laid out here and are quite simple to grasp. Your first one is the city district, which is mainly housing. Build these if you see your housing get too low, which is indicated here. The more you have, the faster your pops will grow. It also keeps them very happy. Each district of this kind costs two energy per month upkeep. This is also a way to gain an extra building slot on your planet. Next is the industrial district. These also cost two energy per month and the primary function is to turn surplus minerals into alloys and consumer goods, which are incredibly important to your shipbuild production and pop upkeep respectively. Be mindful of how many minerals you have before spending out on these districts, as you could see a huge decrease and even a negative on your minerals if too many of these districts are built at once. Generator districts produce good old energy credits which are essential for most of the currency needed in this game. Ironically, it does cost one energy upkeep but will produce far more than the upkeep needed to run this district. Feel free to put these down on most planets you inhabit, as more energy is a very welcoming sight. You could also customize your planet and use the generator world designation for more energy production. Agricultural districts are quite literally your bread and butter districts. These will produce most of your empire's food at the cost of one energy per month. Make sure to turn a planet with many agricultural districts into an agro world to maximize food production. And finally, we have the mining districts. Upkeep on these is also one energy per month. Again, be sure to find worlds with many mining districts to take full advantage of the production that can be earned there. Don't forget, we're looking for high amounts of minerals so we can put more industrial districts down, which in turn leads to more alloys and consumer good production. This tab lets us build our planetary buildings. By clicking on a plus icon, it will then open up the build tab on the right hand side. Keep an eye on the price and the upkeep of certain buildings and make sure you have plenty of whatever currency or material is needed to pay for the building. Please note that when you upgrade a building, it will require more upkeep and sometimes unique materials that you may not have researched yet. Some planets have special features which eventually can be unlocked specifically for that planet. To check for any rare planetary features, hover over this icon here. If there is one available and you have researched the technology needed, then you will be able to build that special building within your building slots back down here. 
Some planets will have something called blockers, which stop you from building more districts. If this is the case on your planet, then hover over this icon to identify what the blockers are, as there are many different types. You can then wait for the technology to become available, and research it to have the ability to remove that blocker. More room means more production. We want to show you this tab here, and it's very important. This shows us what our planet produces and what it's costing our empire. As you can see, our capital is producing a lot of good things for us, including research. Now, this does come at the cost of our minerals, though. We actually earn more energy than we're using, so there's no upkeep cost of energy on the planet. Now, if we're not earning more energy than we're using, then it would show here in the upkeep part, like the minerals. That's the reason we have the mineral deficit, because our research buildings are costing us more minerals than we're producing. Keep an eye on this tab here and things will become very clear as to why you're struggling. Okay, so this next screen can be very confusing to new players and we will do our very best to help you understand what's going on here. But please note that playing as different empires will show slightly different names and icons, but in principle, it's mostly based around the same idea. As we can see here, we have complex drones and menal drones, and they both have their usages. Complex drones are the more intelligent drones which fill your research labs and your more unique buildings with workers. And the menile ones, they are the ones that work your districts and your basic buildings, such as the energy grids or this mineral purification plant here. Each building you build will open a slot for a specific worker in this population tab along here. Now, to be able to run and utilize our research labs, we're going to need brain drones. It tells us here that two brain drone jobs become available for every research lab. Now, to know how many brain drones we will need altogether to be able to max our research, we could count them here. So, we would need eight for the labs and one for the supercomputers. But as you expand and develop your planets, that gets harder to do. Another quicker and easier way would be to go back to your population tab and hover over your available job icons here. As you can see, it tells me I need nine brain drones, which I happen to have, so that's sorted then. So where are my two available jobs, you ask? Going down the list, we see near the bottom that it's the maintenance drones that are now needed. Moving back over to the menial drone section, we can see that it says the same information there. If we want to fill these jobs, then go ahead and click the maintenance drone and it will automatically pull two pops away from other jobs to fill the jobs you prioritize. Any menial drone can do any of the jobs here. So if you need more food, then prioritize the farms and just wait until you've grown two more pops to fill the other slots. There are many different scenarios where you may need different types of pops to maintain balance in your colonies. For example, if you're experiencing crime, then go ahead and build the correct building needed and come back here to fill that specific job to take care of the crime. If you would like to know just when you'll be expecting that next pop to join your colony, then take a look over here. This shows us how many months it will take to grow an organic pop. And this one shows us the assembly time for a robotic pop. The assembly icon here will be your primary way of getting pops if you are a robotic empire. But in some instances, you can have both organic and robotic pops being made at the same time. If you are a devouring swarm empire or something similar, then you will only ever have your own pop showing here in this pie chart unless you have just conquered a planet and you are in the process of purging them. If you are a more friendly empire that is willing to have open migration treaties or coalitions, then this could be a very colorful pie chart. It could have three or four or even more colors that are representing different species that live on that planet. So that's it for this guide. Again, we're really hoping that this will help anyone, but more specifically the complete beginners of this complex game. We love this game and we really want more people to experience the pure awesomeness of Stellaris. That's right guys, and if anyone should require any more help then please pop a comment down below or better yet, why not join our growing Discord where we offer 24 hour support on Stellaris and any other strategy type games. We call ourselves a collective and we are always ready to help or just chat with anyone really. So the link for that is in the description below. The collective must grow. Also, a huge, huge thank you for ToxicT15 for helping us out with this tutorial. If you guys want to check out his channel and see what cool Solaris related content he has, then click on his link in the description below also. Well, that's it from us. If it helped you out, please pop a like for us and consider subscribing to all of our channels for more up-to-date Solaris content. On behalf of the collective, take care and bye-bye for now. Make it so.